local. Today we're going to talk about container gardening. Once again, we get to do our program in this lovely greenhouse surrounded by all these brilliant spring colors. Because they weren't kidding, it is a longer, cooler, wetter spring. But today we're going to look at cozy green, taste good things. I have some pots that I just picked up at the dollar store. Makes it really nice and inexpensive. There are all kinds of basil that you can get. <laughs> no way can they go outside yet. You have to leave them indoors. It's way, way, way too cold. They're going to go underneath your tomatoes probably late May, early June. But for now, you can still get them. Grow them in on your windowsill. You can either just pop them in the pots like this and use them just like that. They'll grow fine in those pots until it's time to put them in the garden outside. Or if you find them like this and you want to toss it in the pot, you just add some soil. Try to get an indoor planter box mix if you're doing these inside. Anything that says good for indoor plants is going to do you just fine. The reason behind that is it's been pasteurized, heated, treated, so that you're not going to get bugs in the house. These little squares usually have about five plants. So I'm just going to tip it over. And then it's just like breaking a bun apart or opening up a hot dog bun. You just put your fingers and you peel and you can feel the roots separating. It's almost like a little bit of Velcro. You're going to tuck it in there, probably add a little more soil. I know you're going to add a little more soil. There's no doubt about it. And there, he's good to go. And I'm just going to pop this over because I want to do it in another container in a bit. Now I've made a big fat mess. But that's okay, because that brings me to a little side note. And that's saucers, you guys. You should always have a saucer underneath your pots. Otherwise, when you go to water them, you are going to have water all over the tabletop, the counter, wherever you've got them. These, again, are little cheap glass ones. If you don't have anything, just use the lid off your yogurt or your sour cream tubs. Anything that's just going to collect the water and save your furniture. You can get, and this is something to be aware of, you can get the terracotta pots and terracotta saucers. These ones are not glazed. That means when you go to water your pot, the water's going to soak through and it's going to get the saucer wet. There's going to be condensation and wet on the bottom and it's not doing your furniture any good. So try to look for the ones that have got a glaze on the inside. They'll work much better. The other thing, if you've got containers and it's unglazed, you don't need a whole lot of distance. If you are keeping your containers out on a patio or a deck, whether you're just house proud or you're renting and you don't want to leave them with your damage deposit, you don't really need anything thicker than a popsicle stick. Just put it down and put your saucer on top. That allows for airflow. Just like in the plastic ones you can buy, they've got the little feet. That's designed so that the air goes underneath and you don't get the mold in your mildew on your deck or on your patio or on your furniture. So I didn't want to forget to talk about that because sometimes I get going and I forget where I've been and what I've been talking about. So those are my saucers. And there is the basil. Something you can do with the kids if you want. Sometimes you've just got old buckets that they've gotten for Easter or for birthdays or old things, old buckets that you used at the beach and they're not going to use them this year. You can take a bucket like this. I filled it with soil already. You should, by rights, take a screwdriver or something and make sure that there's a hole in the bottom. In this case, I figured I would plant up some mint. And I guess I should have done that a little different, but I will, I'll give you the little hint thing in a bit. Yeah, I like it that way. You wouldn't think you'd be so fussy putting things in the ground or putting things in baskets, but you are. This is a chocolate mint that I'm putting in here. Doesn't matter what kind of mint you're growing, please <laughs> keep it in containers, you guys. 
it follows that old adage of, it's easy to grow. Everybody can grow it, which in turn means it's really invasive. It grows everywhere. It spreads by runners, and you'll have mint growing through the front lawn, the back lawn. And in this, I am going to add a little more soil. And then I'm going to put a little bit of soil in here. Not a whole lot. But this is a garlic chive. So I thought this is a nice chocolate mint. It smells just great. This is a little garlic chive. It's going to grow up and it's going to have lovely purple flowers on it. So it kind of goes with the pot. And if you can see all the little black things on here, those are all the seeds. When they sprouted, they still get stuck on the ends. And I just think it looks kind of cool until they fall off. This is what I wanted to say. When you are transplanting plants out of a pot, what you want to do is just lightly squeeze the pot. And all you're doing is making sure that the soil is releasing from the edges of the pot. You're not massaging the roots. You're not squishing it to death. And then the other thing you do is make an L with your hand. Put it so that the plant is protected in here. Tip it over. And then you're grabbing the soil ball. You haven't broken any stems. You haven't lost any flowers. And you've got a real good grip on it. And I'm actually putting it in this little pot here. I'll add a little more soil. And when you tamp down the soil in your pots, or anywhere, you're just getting rid of the air pockets around the roots. You're not making a brick. So don't push too hard. And then I'm just going to tuck this in here. And I have kind of a tiered looking thing where I'm going to have the mint growing and it's going to get fairly long. And I'm going to have this lovely bunch of chives with purple flowers and it's going to look really sharp. Might be fun for the kids, it's fun for me. So there's another one. Oh, you know what? In case you think that's kind of boring for a while, these are edible. Let's tuck in a pansy. These have been in the pots for a little bit, so I'm just going to tear off the roots. Sometimes if the plants have been in the pots too long, the roots start growing in circles, and then they think that's the only way that they can grow. So if you scratch them up or tickle them, then you can just pop them in, and they'll start spreading the roots out other ways. And I'll grab one more. Same, same. I'm sorry, Michelle, I promise I will sweep your floor when I'm done. And that looks even prettier, don't you think? Now, what else was I going to show you? Oh, these are terracotta pots. We talked about those. Um, they look good. They might look a little boring. But you can use the acrylic paints. If you paint them up with the acrylic paints, it dries in about five minutes, you guys. It's a really easy craft to do. You can use all your artistic talents on it. And I know I flip things around really fast. <laughs> and I tour also. I also try to go slower, just so that you guys can see what I'm doing and see what I'm showing you. But this acrylic paint, when you put it on, it takes like five minutes to dry. And in all honesty, it will stay outside in the elements and still look good for, well, the one I had outside lasted for five years before it finally got too grunty looking and I had to take it out. If you use these style pots inside, you might want to just find these kinds of inserts. They're little plastic ones. They just pop in the pot like that. You can put your soil in, you can put your plant in, looks really good. The advantage to having that little plastic liner is that when you go to water your plants, your pot's not going to look all wet, which really isn't a big issue for most people, but some people it is. You've got just wet colored clay from here down and dry, and then you don't like it, then use an insert. Put your soil in there, put your plant in there, and you're going to be just fine. And did I talk about cover and holes? I don't think I did. So here I have another stack. 
and you're going to get your pots. This is going to be a strawberry tower, and it's got lots of holes. If you have landscape fabric, you can cut off a piece and just pop it in there. If you don't, use your coffee filters. They work just beautifully. All you need to do is keep the soil in there so it's not draining all over the place. A lot of people will tell you to put rocks in the bottom of your planter pots and they'll usually tell you to use about an inch, but they're changing the story on that one. They have now decided that the soil in your pots, the bottom couple of inches, the bottom two inches typically stay saturated, whether you've got drainage in there or not. So if you've put yourself in an inch worth of, of rock in the bottom for drainage, and then that saturated level is another two inches, you've just lost all that growing room because for the most part, most roots will not stay in that damp, damp, really wet soil. They don't like wet roots. So you've just lot of whole, you've lost a whole lot of planting area in your pot. So coffee filters, landscape fabric, they work. Even if you're doing it like this, I have a coffee filter in the bottom of this one and I filled it up with some soil. And then I have another pot. I did put a coffee filter, but I don't really need to because the only place it's gonna drain is into the soil below it, so it's not a real big issue. And then I'm gonna put some soil in this one. Now, strawberries, you know that you can get them in these little pots. And they usually run you, depending on where you're at, anywhere from $3.50 to $5 a plant. And right now you'll find in the stores a lot of them, and outside in the yard, are already flowering, and you're starting to get the little berries. Now, if this is your first year with them in the garden, they are going to tell you, snip off the flowers. It's really hard to do. Nobody likes doing it, but it allows your plant to get a bigger, stronger root base, and then you're gonna end up getting more strawberries in the long run. You only have to do it for the first couple weeks, and then you're fine. Squeeze, 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 and pull. And there again, you can see how the roots are starting to go in a circle, so I'll just tease them out. Pop them in there. And the infamous, add a little more soil. But that's how I would do that one. Now, that's one plant, and that cost me $3.50. Or, if you want, you can go out and buy these little bundles, and this is called bare root. They come in a little piece of landscape fabric. Hey, guess what? You got the liner for your pots. Just pull it apart, and it's really quite messy. But there are your strawberry starts, all with a real good set of roots on them. And a lot of times, a bit of green growing. So on these ones, you're just gonna pop them in the soil. And you want it so that the soil comes, this is called the crown, up here. So you're gonna want to have the soil come up about there, okay? Not up there and not too far down. And you'll be able to figure it out because you can see where the roots are coming down and you just wanna make sure that the tops of those are covered, okay? And you're gonna put them around the edge of your pot. I will just do a couple here. And then I'm gonna do the same thing in the next pot. I put the soil in here first simply because it's really boring watching somebody put soil in pots. So you guys, you can do it whichever way is comfortable for you. You can hold the plant up and pop the soil around it. Make sure it's all the way up to the crown. Tuck them in. That guy's gonna sit there. And you'll put them all the way around the edge, all the way around the edge, and leave about four, four inches in between. And then one, two, and where did this go? There he is, right there, right in front of me. And that will be your strawberry tower. 
These guys will grow. They'll grow well. Um, you will get fruits off them this year. And they will send off runners. Your best bet is to pinch off the runners. You really don't need them. These new guys will give you a really good, they'll give you an okay crop the first year. Year number two and year number three, you should get a really good crop of strawberries. Year number four, eh, might be like year number two. So, or even year number one. And if that's the case, then you can let the runners grow and you can snip them off because those are the babies and you can plant those guys. And then when these guys run out of juice, you've already got your otherwise your new established plants ready to go. So that's a little strawberry tower. If your tower is really tall, there are holes in the bottom of your pots, run a bamboo stick through them and it just adds a little more stability. Here, this is just a chopstick thing. But you would stick it through if I can find a hole. Oh, that's because I've got the cloth in there. So you'll just run it through and it holds it in place a little better, okay? And that would be the strawberry tower. And it's Candace and we're back with a herb pot now. I have a terracotta pot, which is gonna be just fine for the summer. I have a sage, I have a rosemary, and I have a thyme. And sometimes people have a hard time putting the soil and their plants together and they get really nervous about it. One of the tricks you can do is put your pots in the pot and then put all your soil around it. Then you can pull out the pot and you actually have the depression where you know your plant's gonna go. And you can pull it out. Ooh, this is a really good one for seeing how the roots are growing in a circle. So just tease them out. Pop them in there. Here is the thyme. And again, this has got a lot of roots on the, on the bottom, which is gonna be hard for me to pull through, so just tear it off. It's not gonna hurt the plant, it's not gonna kill it. If anything else, it's gonna stimulate it to say, hey, I lost some feeder roots, I need to grow some more. And a gentle tug. And again, pull some of these. If your pot doesn't feel like it's going to be deep enough, you can actually just chunk off a bunch of it and then pop it in. So like I said, don't be afraid. You don't want to take off probably more than a quarter or a third of the bottom of that plant, but it's certainly not going to kill it. And the rosemary, he's fine. Now this is a smaller pot, but there is nothing saying that you can't jazz things up. You always leave about a half inch to an inch of soil down below the lip of your plant pot, because when you go to water it, you wanna make sure that the water stays inside the pot. If your soil's right level with the edge of the pot, then you are, when you water it, it's just gonna go over the edge. It's not gonna be nice. But there are all sorts of things that you can do to jazz this up if you wanted to. You've got different colored rocks that you can sprinkle on. You've got fir bark. Typically you find that where you, um, in the orchid section, because they use a lot of fir bark, the fine fir bark for orchid mixes. And it's just lovely. But I thought for this one, I'm going to do the white rock, I think, just because it looks good. I like the bright. This will act as a mulch so that when I go to water it, it's going to stay wet longer. Terracotta pots are notorious for sucking up the water and having it evaporate. So you only usually plant things in there that can handle drought or like their roots a little bit drier. Hey, I might even have enough. Ha! And there's, you can use, you can use bigger rocks. Yeah, let's 
talk while you're scraping rocks out of the bottom of a bowl so you can all hear me. But something like that, I think, I think that looks pretty. I think it looks charming. If it's not enough for you, you can tweak it up like that. You could put in a couple of really big rocks. It all depends on what you want to do. You might decide that you want it a little woodsier looking and you can chunk in a great big old piece of wood with some moss on it. Entirely up to you what you want to do. Stick in some curly twigs, make it look, I don't know, just natural. The only thing you would have to be concerned about with this is when you cover your stuff, when you cover your plant pots with mulch, it's going to be really hard to tell when you need to water it. One of the things you can do is after you water your pot and you know it's soaked and drenched, lift it up. See how heavy it is. And that way, if you're going out in the afternoon, you go, hmm, wonder if it needs to get watered. When you pick it up and it goes whoosh, then you know you need it. Or the other thing you can do is use a bamboo skewer. These work really well. You just put it in the soil and you leave it there for about 15 minutes. Then you're going to pull it out. If it looks wet or you've got little pieces of soil sticking to it, then you know there's enough water in there, leave it alone. If it comes out looking brand new and dry, then yeah, you need to give your plants a really good drink. The other thing is if you don't have a skewer, most people have spaghetti. Stick your spaghetti in there. You can leave it for 10 minutes, pull it out. You will know for sure that it's way too wet and you don't need to water it if you forget your spaghetti because it gets so wet when you go to pull it out, the wet part stays in your pot and the rest comes out. The other option is when you use spaghetti, you can just break it off and you've still got something to keep on going for a long time. So anyway, that's just another idea of things that you can do if you don't have a lot of area. Looks great on a patio or a balcony. And that's the herb pot. Hey, it's Candace with Grow Local. I found this at a dollar store and I have to say I was looking for some pots for doing the strawberry tower and I wasn't sure what I was after. And a gentleman stopped me and said, hey, have you tried this? He said, it's absolutely brilliant. It's really big. It holds up really well. He's had his for a couple years now. And he says, I've even hit it with the weed eater a couple times and it held up. So this is my shot. I'm trying it. It holds about 57 liters of soil, which if you go buy it at the, at the store, most of those bags are 50 liters. Um, which will actually just about fill this thing and that should be fine. Otherwise buy two bags and do a strawberry tower. Multitude of things that you can do in here. It's deep enough that you can grow your lettuce, you can grow Swiss chard, you could do parsley and some Swiss chard. How about some lettuce? And you would break all these guys up but it would be a really pretty color combination. You could, oh, you could do a, you could just do so much, you guys. <laughs> My brain started going and I forgot what kind of things, but anything, radishes, the carrots, especially the ones that are called um, the fingerling, the little short guys, they only get to be like four inches in length. Those would grow really well in here. But I kind of thought today that I would do a pizza. So, it is far too early to use your, it is far too early to use your tomatoes, okay, to put them outside. So don't. I'm going to put this in here just to show you what it is, but typically this isn't going out until the end of May or the beginning of June, okay? It's just not warm enough. You need to have the night temperatures to be a consistent 10 degrees. Otherwise, you just get cellular damage and you're not going to get really good tomatoes. But you can split this up with sticks and make it look like pizza slices. And you could put, this is a tumbler tomato. So it's not gonna grow up and be really, really huge, but it will probably be a, a mass of about this big and it flows down and you will have all kinds of cherry sized tomatoes on it. They're really, really tasty. And he would just go in there. 
just like so. Tip it out. And if you want to remember what you've got, you can always stick your labels over by the corner. So there's my tumbler. What else goes really good with pizza? Well, you got your tomatoes. How about oregano for your sauce? When you guys buy oregano, please remember that just because it says oregano, it doesn't mean they all taste the same. You can get a golden oregano, which is really quite mild. You can get Greek oregano, which is a really good concentrate of oil and has great flavor. You can get a hot and spicy oregano, which tastes a lot like the Greek, only it has a little extra ping on your tongue at the end of it. Some of these you will find you get lots of roots on it growing through the pot. So just pick them off because sometimes it's just too hard to pull through the holes in the pot. Squeeze, 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 pull. And again, this is probably one that I will tickle the roots a bit just so that it can grow and not in circles. One thing too that people forget is your oregano will do great in this container for a long time, but oregano, your thyme, um, and your rosemary, those are shrubs, you guys. They're not gonna stay neat and tidy and, and little like this for long. So please feel free to keep picking, prune it, use it. And if it gets too big for your container, put it out in the garden. They go just fine. How about chives? You can put cilantro in here. You can do rosemary in here. I'm gonna put some chives right there. The soil isn't all the way to the top of this container. I probably, if I was at home, I would do it within an inch of the top. But I have to put this in the car and take it home after, so I'm just kind of erring on the side of caution, okay? Basil always goes good on your pizzas. And you remember how I said? You'll just open it up like a hot dog or a hamburger bun. You just pull them apart, listen to that Velcro rip. And then you can plant your basil in here. And I like basil, so I'll do a couple. And again, it's too, too early for your basil, you guys. It goes out the same time as your tomatoes. And like I said, cilantro or parsley. I don't like cilantro, so we're having parsley. Thank you very much. And people think I'm nuts sometimes when I say, no, thank you. But that, I guess, is a is a chemical thing with your body and some people can have cilantro and they think it's just oh the best tasting thing and other people are like me and it's like ooh, did somebody wash this with soap it's just awful so there i've got some chives some basil i have my tumbler tomato i have oregano i got some parsley and i'm going to throw in some onions leftovers from my onion set. So I'm just going to go and plunk in some onions. And they go about inch and a half, two inches deep. When you're planting things like this, just remember how big does the bulb get? That's how much room you want to get it to grow. So if you know your bulb's going to be about, your onion's going to be about that big, then you know you're gonna to wanna to plant one there and one there so that they both have room to grow. Some people have had really good luck where they just take a clump of five and plant them all together and the onions actually just push themselves apart. And then when they go to pull their onions, they just grab five stalks and they got five to take in the house. I haven't tried it yet. I might just do that in the garden this year though and see if it works, see if it's true. There we go. That's my pizza garden. I did not wedge it. You can wedge it if you like. And I hope you have fun with it.